Hi, my name is Aaron, and this is my show, Reeducation. And today we're going to talk about why I became an anarchist. Yay! Okay, so a um, little bit of context here. Uh, a lot of you that don't know me uh, would be surprised to find out that I was a neo-Nazi when I was a kid. Well, okay, that's a stretch. I wasn't a neo-Nazi per se. I was neo-Nazi adjacent. I was what you would call alt-light, I suppose, even though that was before alt-light even existed. Now, I grew up in a very um, conservative, slightly, well, a little bit more than slightly racist parents in the most conservative, redneck, right-wing province in my entire country. And basically, I've been surrounded by fascists and neo-Nazis and the right wing my entire life. And that has basically emboldened me to want to become better than that. Now, what was my childhood like being neo-Nazi adjacent? Well, when I was in high school, I used to run around with a lot of neo-Nazi gangs. They were idiots, morons, a bunch of disgusting, deplorable human beings who I wouldn't wipe the fucking shit off my boot on if I seen them collapse dead on the floor. But at the time, they were my... friends? Of course, it's hard to say because friends and neo-Nazis really don't go hand in hand because you can't really have any friends if your ideology is pure hatred. Inevitably, you just end up hating your friends because, well, they might believe somebody that you hate isn't quite as hateable as you hate them, so now you gotta hate each other. But I digress. I used to have friends in high school that would come in wearing great big swastikas on their t-shirts and shaved heads and tattoos of runes underneath their eyes. It was a bad thing. And... I... It's a really tough call because I, I, I wasn't sure that they were right about things in, in those days, but I was also an edgy shitlord and I didn't necessarily think that what they were saying was wrong. I thought a lot of it was kind of funny, if that makes sense. If you've ever been part of the right wing, you understand kind of what I'm talking about. Or if you have ever, ever analyzed like the 4chan uh, message boards, you kind of know what I mean. Uh, conservatives have this very dark, uh, very mean sense of humor that just doesn't relate to people on the left, at least not a lot of people on the left. Uh, that like they, they actively call each other cucks and assholes and stuff like that. And it's no big deal. I mean, whatever. But after getting out of high school, I did a whole lot of growing. Um, I had to get a job and in my situation, I grew up poor or at least lower middle class. I grew up in the ghetto. Uh, so when I got a job, I was working with minorities. I was working with LGBT people. I was working with, working with a broad scope of all sorts of individuals from everywhere. And it opened my eyes to the idea that all people are equal. Funny that. Imagine my surprise. So I became a libertarian on most of those fronts where you could kind of just do whatever you want, live however you want, as long as it doesn't bother me, that's no big deal. And I, I have held on to that for the large portion of uh, my time outside of high school, where I thought, you know what, live and let live, you guys do whatever you want, but I still kept the ideas of conservative tax policy, of fiscal conservatism, uh, of a lot of uh, very right-wing ideas, but my, my scope, my view of the social situation had been um, woke a little bit, I guess you could say. It, 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 it had been um, relieved from the hatred that had been pent up from my angsty uh, shitlord days. So then I moved on to become a little bit more of an adult and a little bit more understanding of how the world works and a little bit more um, empathetic towards people's situations. And I really started to uh, become more or less a social democrat to democratic socialist right around that sort of area. I didn't really understand what socialism uh, socialism was in that it means worker control of the means of production. 
I didn't really understand what that was at the time, but I did know that I really like social programs and I thought that free healthcare was a good idea because it is. And uh, I, I, I liked a lot of the social ideas that social democracy and democratic socialism kind of right on the cusp provided. And I thought that it was very interesting um, and uh, fascinating that these ideas were so obvious and they, they linked up to so many of the things that I had been saying in the past. And then something happened. I started to read a little bit more about history, and I found someone called Richard Wolff, uh, who is an economics professor from, uh, I believe, the New School. He's a visiting professor at the New School, I believe it is, something like that. But anyway, he is a very smart man who talks about Marxism. And at the time, I had never even heard of Marxism before. I'm like, Marxism? What the hell is that? That's probably, well, if I had heard anything of it at all, I knew that it was probably a bad thing, probably related to communism. And communists were clearly the same as Nazis. And Nazis are bad, so communists are bad too, is my line of thinking. And then a change in my mind started to happen as I listened to the things that he was saying. He introduced me to the concept of worker cooperatives. The workers are able to decide on their own independently what they want to produce, when they want to produce it, how they want to produce it, and what they're going to do with the profits, as opposed to a capitalist business situation where the owner of the business chooses what to produce, when to produce, how to produce, and what to do with the profits, and then hires you to work for him for a small fee. You see, the workers in a worker cooperative are the bosses. And when I heard this, I thought that it was absurd because you need to have a boss. I mean, like, without bosses, there would be just chaos. And then I was sorely mistaken because they explained to me, no, you can still have a boss. He just can't be making a hundred times 10,000 times, 200,000 times the amount that a basic employee is making. Now, it makes a lot of sense. It makes me think, why wouldn't we all want to be part of a worker cooperative? I mean, we could all be our own bosses. Instead of giving away our surplus labor value, the extra money that we create by working for someone else, instead of giving that money to them, we get to keep it for ourselves. Man, what a novel idea that is. And there are all kinds of other cool benefits that come along with that because if you create a worker cooperative, then the people in that area of the worker cooperative would be the employees that are there. So basically the community would own and control that business. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that things like pollution would be less likely to happen because if a company wanted to pollute their water system, their, in, their rainforest, their uh, environment, well, the workers that were in that environment would be the ones that owned the business, so they would probably choose to not kill themselves. It's pretty simple. It makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of if this, then that, that ends up resulting in a betterment of society. And that is a good thing. And it's certainly not what capitalism offers. Capitalism does nothing more than offer competition. And when you're constantly competing with other people in your community, then you're inevitably not going to be incentivizing the betterment of society. You're, then you're going to be incentivizing the accumulation of wealth. Well, that doesn't help anybody except for the person that got the wealth. Now, does it? So after doing a little bit more research, I realized that this whole idea of a worker cooperative actually functions under a theory known as anarcho-communism which is you only have leadership if they are justified, if they're necessary, if the people that are in that area deem a leader something that they want to have. How strange. That would mean that you as a boss would be directly accountable to your employees. Well, that's flipped right on its head now, isn't it? That would mean that only a boss that would be the best at their job that everybody agreed was literally the best at their job could become a boss. And if they didn't do good at their job, the workers would 
get rid of them and put someone else in. Well, that's really interesting. It would be something of a true meritocracy where you would be based on your deeds and not on your words. Think of it. Think of an election more like reading a resume without having the name at the top. That would be how you would elect a leader. You would look at their platform, you would look at what they have accomplished, and you would look at what they want to accomplish, and from there you would move forward. I believe that it is an incredibly defendable position to hold, so come at me, bitches! Anyway, this has been Re-Education. My name is Aaron. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching.